There's a growing gap between what standard statistics like gross domestic product tell us about the state of the economy and how people feel about their own well-being. But does GDP really provide an accurate reflection of quality of life? We've become more aware of the fact that there are weaknesses in classic measures like GDP and hence the well-known examples such as if you have an earthquake, um, it looks like your GDP is going up afterwards. But another angle I think to it, certainly for the UK perspective, is that there are other kinds of capacities in society which we don't measure um, and we probably neglect. Your social capital, your connection to others, the way in which we connect to others, um, turn out in fact, not only to be important in them themselves, but are also very powerful in relation to economic growth. In 2008, French President Nicolas Sarkozy established the Stiglitz Saint Fituzzi Commission on the Measurement of Economic Performance and Social Progress. The simple message of the report that what you measure affects what you do uh, is one that I think people all over have come to understand. The other message that GDP is not a good measure of well-being has also been understood. The bid to go beyond GDP is growing and not necessarily where you'd imagine it. I work um, for example with the government of Bhutan which is a great privilege and they have since 1972 um, articulated their aim as being promoting gross national happiness but now they too are developing an index a concrete quantitative measure however imperfect and incomplete which can help their policymakers to really institutionalize this idea this vision and motivation in practice and there are a number of other developing countries which are doing so trying to integrate um, different aspects of relatedness social connectedness, harmony, and subjective well-being into measures of either poverty or of well-being. Clearly, we can't measure people's quality of life just by looking at what the economy is producing. We need to measure a wider range of indicators. What we have been doing uh, is to, to develop a, a set of uh, well-being indicators uh, in conjunction with the rest of uh, our uh, European partners, European statisticians. And so we, we are now in a position to be able to, to measure well-being and to do it not only in France but also in the rest of Europe and to compare the different national situations. So I think it's a great leap forward. The OECD is playing a central role in the global debate. Its How's Life report offers a comprehensive picture of the diverse issues that make up people's lives in 40 countries worldwide. The report assesses 11 specific aspects of life, ranging from income, jobs and housing, to health, education and the environment in all countries covered. House Life is the first attempt really to uh, bring forward at the international level a set of indicators that allows you to compare many dimensions of well-being. On material well-being on the one side with income and wealth, jobs and earnings and uh, housing and on quality of life on the other side with things such as uh, work-life balance, uh, education, health, governance, uh, trust in institutions and importantly la overall life satisfaction. How's Life is part of the OECD's Better Life initiative. It was launched in mid-2011 as a first attempt to bring together internationally comparable measures of well-being in line with the Stiglitz and Fetuzzi Commission findings. Another element of the OECD Better Life initiative is your Better Life Index, an interactive tool that allows people to compare countries' performance and participate in the debate. 